Hi everyone, LazyFire here. Welcome back to Battlefield 4 Multiplayer. Today we're playing on Rogue Transmission, and I'm going to be using a support class. Support is easily my favorite class in this game, both in terms of time played and the gadgetry available. It's got some really important stuff in it, and one of those important things is actually the ammo box. This is a starting piece of equipment with the support class in Battlefield 3, but in Battlefield 4 you actually have to work your way up through the ammo pack first and the ammo pack only throws down a limited number of bullets per uh, throw and it takes a long time to refill explosives. The ammo box, which you see here, is actually basically an upgraded version of that but it refills the bullets much faster and it refills explosives much much faster. As a matter of ta fact, by the time I get to the C point here I'll have refilled all three of the C4 bricks I threw down early on. And watch this, I'm going to ghost ride into this guy. It's a move you can make when you jump off of a vehicle that's moving at a significant speed into a person. It's really one of my favorite tactics to kill people in this game. Uh, I do two of them here, so when you see the score at the end, just add two to that to understand how many kills I actually got. Now you can also run people over, but I didn't do that here. And you've also now seen the LMG, or the light machine gun. It's the exclusive weapon of the support class. This one is the PKP Pechneg, or the PK Chang as I have come to call it since Battlefield 3, as you are not allowed to accept any substitutions to this class. It's just absolutely a, f a fantastic gun. I encourage you, if you've not used it and you play this game, to go and use it. It's just really a great LMG. If you know how to use it, that is to fire in short controlled bursts, you'll be getting kills in no time. I've definitely shot people out of the sides of helicopters by just firing this thing. Of course, you'll also see me just fire this thing haphazardly later on. There's a reason to that, and I'll explain it when we get to it. Actually, you'll see me fire it like an idiot right here. Partly because I didn't take the hybrid scope off. And I also thought there was somebody in that vehicle. Oh well. Anyways, the ammo box is really a fantastic item. It is going to give you some points if you throw it down in front of your teammates who need ammo. And if you don't have anyone on your team who has an ammo box, your engineers and some of your assault guys are going to be kind of useless because they're just so damned useful. Being able to toss down ammo for your team means that your engineers are going to be able to fire more tanks. It means that your assault guys are going to be able to fire longer bursts and not have to worry about anything. And if you really hate yourself, you can throw one down for recon on a hill and he'll be able to snipe all game effectively from somewhere else. So I guess if you really want them out of your way, that's the way to do it. Now right here, you're seeing me kind of fire haphazardly and all this stuff. With LMGs, that's kind of an important factor. You don't need to hit somebody with an LMG to do a lot of damage to their ability to fight back. You see, the LMGs... Oh, here's some C4. By the way, C4, you can toss it in this game. You don't have to be right up against stuff. This has really helped my survivability, but as you can see, I still took 40 points of damage from that. That's a lot of damage from one C4 brick that I was pretty far away from. And here I just die. But even though I died there, I get a suppression assist. That's kind of what I was waiting for, actually. The suppression assist means that you've actually caused their screen to get a little blurry by firing near them. With the LMGs, it's a much more pronounced effect, but all classes will get points for suppression assists. The LMGs are fantastic for this very purpose. Just to be able to stop somebody from being able to see as well, to aim as well, is a really big boon to your team. Of course, the PKP and the other LMGs are not really meant to be sniper rifles by any means, but if you know how to fire them, like I said, you can usually do pretty well. But they're going to get outclassed up close and often at a distance. Sometimes DMRs and such will be able to take them out before they can really get a good suppressive, uh, suppressive effect on somebody. Up here, you're going to actually see how bad this thing is at hip firing. This is a really dumb move on my part. I should have stayed sighted in, but I didn't. And I pay for it, because the PKP has a hip fire rating of 5. And I knew this when I went into it, and I still did it. Don't know why. I'm kind of dumb, I guess. The other issue with using LMGs up close or uh, when you're aiming down sights is that if you move while you're firing, you get a pretty significant penalty to firing with the LMG. So it's best to stick in one spot, maybe even duck and fire whenever you're using one of these things. And here's the fundamental problem of using a support class. 
a lot of the time your teammates will run straight away from you when you throw down ammo boxes, even if they're requesting it, they'll just keep running. So you kind of have to catch them in a corner, throw down an ammo box, and hope they need ammo. The way to tell this is if they have the flashing square with the bullet symbols in it. That's a really good way to figure out if they need ammo. So I just go around basically every single game and toss ammo at people and jihad jeep stuff. That guy's got a good jihad jeep going. Now you saw me attempting to put one together at the very start of this game by throwing C4 on top of an ATV and then uh, accidentally throwing that into a guy who was on foot. You can throw one of those things similar to how I did at that one guy, at a tank or other armored vehicle or just other vehicle that's on the ground, sometimes in the air if you're very smart about it, and end up with a pretty, pretty good kill. Right here I know there's a guy above us, but I just couldn't find him. Um, it's unfortunate. I have a way of dealing with snipers later in the game. It's called the XM25, and we'll talk about it when we get there. Now, in addition to the ammo box and C4, as you've seen, which is a throwable, you explode it with one trigger, you throw it down with the other. Not very difficult. Um, you're also you also have access to the mortars. Mortars were in Battlefield 3, but in Battlefield 4 they work a little bit differently. Oh, and here I get killed because I decide to tell my team about stuff. You can see the s raw rocket come in and just nail me. Uh, I should not have been there when I did that. I deserve that death, like, a lot. Anyways, the mortar is great in this game because it's, uh, one, limited ammo, so you can't just sit there and spawn, uh, spam mortar from your spawn. But two, and uh, by the way, you couldn't really do that in Battlefield 3 either. After a point, they removed being able to fire mortar from spawn in that game after a time. Uh, but two, the limited ammo also uh, comes with a pretty big benefit. You're able to plant it wherever you want on the map, outside of your spawn, of course, and then walk away and then get access to it whenever you want, whenever you, wherever you are. So I could put one down here and walk all the way back to my spawn and still activate it and use it remotely. It's really great for those situations where you want to be able to hit somebody from a distance or you want to be able to support your team but you uh, can't get there in time or you just think you can use some explosives or you want to take somebody off of a roof who's been sniping you and you want to do it from comfort and safety that's a good time to use it. They're very effective to that end. You'll see some people who come into certain maps with that weapon uh, specifically in mind. Like, I'm going to be able to use this to take people out on a rooftop because the XM25 will cut it. It's pretty great. There's another item that the support class gains access to in this game. It's similar to the trophy system in the Modern Warfare and Black Ops series. This guy does not know what he wants to do. Luckily, he took a shot for two for me, so, uh, yeah, Jihad Jeep, son. Oh, I love it. I have more kills with C4 than I care to admit, but the battle log doesn't track it, so uh, we never know that. Actually, it's an interesting point. The Claymore and the C4 were actually supposed to be recon tools in this game, uh, and exclusive to those classes, but as I've mentioned in the recon video, they decided to switch that up and give support access to that as well. Uh, when they did this, it was kind of a late game decision, and they sort of kind of forgot to uh, include tracking for support kills with those weapons in this game. Oops. Ah, you can see a little bit of suppression there where I'm getting shot. So you can see how the screen got a little blurry, uh, how it, if I fired, you would have seen me had a little, I would have had a little bit of trouble aiming. That's suppression. It's a really great thing to use to help your team out. Anyways, the th other item that I was trying to mention there, the it's kind of a counter-explosive weapon, similar to the active protection system on a tank. If an explosive comes within range of this thing's uh, area, it'll just take the explosive out, make it harmless, right? Uh, it only has a couple shots before it has to recharge, and once it recharges, you know, it's kind of there for a few moments. Not really useful. You can also use it as a remote camera if you really need to. Let's get some more C4 kills up in here. Oh, I love the C4 in this game. Being able to toss it makes a huge difference. Anyways, if you really need that thing, it's useful. You can't plant it on top of moving vehicles like tanks, so they can't have double active protection, more or less. So that's good. That's a positive move, I think. Yep. Here we're trying to get right around this tank. I don't know if... 
I think I die on this, actually. I actually had a lot of fun playing this game. I did not expect to actually end up using this for uh, for this LP, uh, but oddly enough, I was compelled to uh, because I do some pretty fun things here. Uh, darn. And that is the issue there. If you uh, try to get some C4 on a tank while it's moving, sometimes it looks like you got it, and sometimes it looks like you didn't, but you actually did. Uh, there is a bug in Battlefield 3 where that almost exact thing happened, where uh, if you threw C4 on a moving tank, sometimes on your screen it looked like it attached to the tank, and other times it did not, uh, but it was or wasn't, depending on the situation. So if a tank was backing up very quickly while you threw C4 on it, uh, you would actually miss and throw it straight on the ground. In this game, you toss it a few feet in front of you, uh, but you're still going to die if you exploded immediately, thinking the tank took it away from you and you're okay. A little bit of an annoying bug, but something I can live with. Hey! Free Jeep, or, well, ATV. You'll also notice I'm throwing an ammo box down on top of the ATV every single time I get on it. That just means that I'm going to be able to recharge my C4 more um, on my way to my destination. Really, really big deal right there. This is why it's a little easier in my mind to use C4 as a support rather than a recon. As it does... Oh, Ghost Ride Kill. Ooh. <laughs> I sent that thing to the moon. Ah, once again, hip fire not working out for me there. But that is the way of things. Got a decent kill assist out of it, man. I hit him once. The LMGs do really decent damage. Uh, damage comparable to an assault rifle, actually. Actually, in the case of the PKP Pechneg, it does about as much damage as, as the Scar H per shot. It's got a base damage of 40. That means it's pretty strong. The issue with LMGs, of course, besides the stability issues I mentioned with hip fire and moving while shooting, is that, well, if you're not very smart with using them, they can be really difficult. You don't want to fire these things in anything longer than maybe a five round burst. And even then, you're uh, unlikely to hit something directly. You've got to be careful about it. Like I said before, these are not weapons that are meant for really close up encounters. These are medium to long range weapons. And even at those long ranges, they're not super accurate. That's why the suppression system is really important to this gun. Actually, you'll see it kind of in effect here. I'm going to start firing on this guy, and I get two hits. I probably did about 40 damage between those two hits based on the distance and the location of those hits. However, I have someone come around this corner back over here. There he is. Now, you can see I realize I'm, I'm actually tap firing a lot of this, but I realize he can't hit me because he's using an assault rifle, and I'm just suppressing him. So I just kept firing on him with full auto fire to take him out. You can see he was not happy. He's in the chat asking what the fuck happened there. Uh, what happened there was I knew how to use my LMG, whereas he was kind of desperate not to die with the assault rifle there. It's kind of an important thing that you know how to use the LMGs, or you're going to have a bit of an unpleasant time trying to figure out the support class. You can always switch on their uh, all-class unlock, the shotgun, but it's situational. Or you can put on things like the carbine or the uh, DMRs or something like that. DMRs being popular for all classes right now. And hope that those will give you the edge you need in the class without having to use the LMGs. And remember, the shotguns are actually an unlock of the class, not of the LMG group. Which means that... Uh, that was dumb. I, don't, I just got nailed with that thing right there. Ouch. Anyways, they're an unlock of the LMG group rather than... Sorry, they're unlock of the class rather than the LMG group, which means that you don't ever have to use an LMG to actually unlock the shotguns. It's kind of an important point to make about those all-class weapons. They're class unlocks rather than weapon unlocks. Once you open the weapon up, you know, you get a DMR, you get the first DMR, you actually have to use the D, uh, DMRs to unlock more DMRs, but getting your first one just has to go use the class. Ouch. And that is, of course, the issue with using the LMGs. You do have to stay pretty still, and if people start moving, you have to be pretty smart about it. 
I really should have disengaged from that guy after a time, but I just kept firing, thinking I was okay. Now, well, here's one of those fun moments. And I... It's a teachable moment. This is what I kind of mean when I say people are goddamn shitlords about helicopters. Transport helicopters are actually pretty useful tools in this game. You can use them to get around the map pretty quickly and uh, do some pretty important things. Unfortunately, a lot of your teammates aren't going to see it the same way and will just assume that they're elevators to the top of a tall building. This guy didn't even get on a particularly tall building before I took over. I flew that thing around for a while and then I switched over to the XM-25. This is the weapon I mentioned earlier. It's an airburst grenade launcher. You may have seen it in Modern Warfare 3 uh, and a few other modern shooters. It's actually a pretty fun gun in this game. The way it works is it has a similar scope to the rangefinder, the PLD from the recon class. You aim down your sight at a uh, surface of some nature. So let's say the side of this mountain. You'll see it in a moment. You aim down the sight at something, you pick up a range. So, right there on the left says air burst zero, offset is three, which means that this thing does not have an air burst range set right now. So, my firing of those things doesn't even matter. By the way, got a kill on that guy somehow. There's no good reason for me to have killed that man, but I got him. And then this other guy just backed his. I don't know what happened. Now, with any of these classes in this game you can actually switch on and off which uh, things have which. I find the XM25 because of the low ammo capacity on it is actually best packed uh, paired with the ammo box. Alright, so you can also use this to kind of spot people. So right here I know these two guys are here, I get a good range, my air burst is at 125, and I take a sniper right off a tower. Oh, the sweetest thing in this game, I swear is just making sure a sniper can't snipe. Just doing this is a reward in and of itself. I don't care how many times I die using it, I don't care if people get annoyed with me uh, because I'm destroying people with it, it's just the best weapon in the game. It means that somebody sitting on a hill or on a building is no longer safe or someone doesn't have to go sniper to go get them or you don't have to call in an air support run or something like that or hope for a helicopter to clear them out. You can just do it yourself from the ground. Absolutely fantastic weapon. I recommend it highly. Other people will also use the mortars to do the same thing. Uh, but you have to be a little bit more careful with the mortars. You can't refill the ammo with an ammo box. And one of the issues I found with mortars is sometimes they don't go high enough to actually hit anything. Or you have to get a little closer than you'd like to the situation. And to be honest, the XM25 is not perfect in and of itself. It still has to have some pretty decent range adjustments on it, so you have to aim a little higher in some cases when you're going about 100 or so meters or more. You have to aim higher than you expect to to hit something. And it's a pretty shitty on its own grenade launcher. I wouldn't suggest using it like that. But you can see where this guy is and how I aim higher when I fire at him. Now watch as I get hits. Yeah, I got one, two hit markers there. That's because I aimed pretty high when I fired on him. Uh, because of that, I was able to account for the drop of the grenades. They're not hit scan, they don't go in a straight line as much as you'd like to believe they do. As a matter of fact, you can see it there, they, aimed, they ended up a little lower than I expected them to. But, eventually, with enough patience and time, you can pretty much kill any sniper on the battlefield. Here I got a little bit closer because it's a little easier. You can see, all you have to do, aim at a surface, get your lock in the bottom right, or the, the right side of the screen, and I'll break this down in the post associated with this video, and then aim a little up and just fire. Uh, you can also see they're pretty shitty against vehicles. This is actually an intentional design decision from the DICE team to make sure that the XM25 wasn't some sort of be-all, end-all weapon. I can understand that to an extent. Uh, of course, if you get caught with your pants down using the XM25, you're not going to be super happy. Got my range. And you notice those didn't explode, because I didn't have an airburst distance. So that's... There you go. That kind of explains what I'm looking at here. Now I have an airburst distance and everything, so I can depend on it. 
Now, from what I remember, and I don't even try it here, you can actually set your air burst range pretty close and then hip fire the thing, and it'll keep that air burst range for you. Which means that you could effectively, if you really wanted to, turn this thing into a really close range grenade launcher that only goes like 10 or 15 feet or something like that. But right there, that's a pretty good example of how it works. Just fire it at the edge of a building and it just explodes them. Fantastic stuff. I spend the rest of the game trying to take these two motherfuckers off of that roof, and I just can't quite get the angle to get both of them. This is one of those cases where a a uh, mortar or somebody in a plane would actually come in handy. Anyways, we're kind of finishing up here, but that is the assault, uh, the support class, the assault class. And you can see I did pretty okay for myself. Not great, but not worse than uh, usual. But I hope you enjoyed it. This is the end of the infantry classes, which means we can jump into a couple vehicles and uh, kind of be done with that. But I'm going to start putting in a lot more uh, fun videos or random videos that don't really have a purpose uh, from here on out. So I hope those are fun as well. Uh, unfortunately, this team got stomped, but that won't always be the case. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you next time.